Hey everybody, it's uh, Mark Vogt with Voltland Outdoors and in today's hot balmy lesson I'm going to show you how string walking changes between a strong bow, one with a very heavy draw, draw weight of 60 pounds and my daughter's 30 pound bow. But first, the intro. Okay, we want to try to see, in today, today what we want to try to find out is what happens to string walking when you change the weight of the bow. Assuming you're the same person, same draw length, and the bow changes its draw weight from 60 pounds down to 30, what happens to your string walking? What you're going to find out in today's lesson is that the string walking, the two main, the two main numbers that I teach in string walking, your 20 meter gap and your 10 meter interval gap change actually linearly along with uh, the draw weight of the bow. So that if I have a 60 pound bow, and my gap for 20 meters is three fingers, then if I'm gonna to go to a 30 pound bow, my 20 meter gap is actually only going to be one and a half fingers. It gets cut in half. When the draw weight goes, when the draw weight gets smaller, that 20 meter gap also gets smaller but what's interesting is the 10 meter interval gets bigger that because it's a weaker bow uh, my 60 pound my 60 pound bow a 10 meter change in range is a half of a finger every half of a finger actually ends up being 10 more meters that i actually travel but when i'm using a bow that's half that weight it ends up being a full finger it ends up being twice as big let's go over that again for the heavier bow, your 20 meter gap is larger than the 20 meter gap for a weaker bow. 60 pounds, three fingers to get to 20 meters. 30 pounds, one and a half fingers. Half that distance. Why? The bow is weaker, so you actually have to, when you change the gap and make it bigger, you're actually bringing the back end of the bow up. So to bring it down, you have to make the gap smaller, smaller, smaller. And that means that for a weaker bow, you have to be angling up higher. It's not going to be able to shoot as flat. It's not gonna be able to shoot as far. Let's go see what this looks like. I'm gonna shoot first the 60 pound, same arrows. We're gonna use the same arrows in this case. I'm gonna use the 60 pound bow and then I'm gonna use the 30 pound bow. If you remember the Voltland shooting method, there are five steps in it. Let's go over them. One, you're going to pick your gap. Two, you're going to anchor under your chin. Three, you're going to look down the left edge of the string with your eye. Four, you're going to put the tip of the arrow right smack on your target. And five, you're going to make a very small motion release. Small, while you're still anchored underneath your chin. You're trying to mimic the release on a compound bow. Small motion, small errors. Small errors, better accuracy. Let's use that and actually shoot at the 20, 20 meter target. I've got my 60 pound bow. My gap, you guys have seen me do this before. My 20 meter gap looks like this. One, two, three fingers like that. And when I line up, this is what my sight picture is going to look like that right there. Let's go give it a try. You're looking over my shoulder. Choosing my gap, three fingers. Drawing back, that's step one. Step two, draw back under my chin. Step three, look down the left edge of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow right on the target. Not above it, not below it, not left, not right. Right on it. Step five, small motion release. Small release like that. Let's do a couple more to see the pattern and then we're gonna switch over to the 30 pound bow. Step one, choose my gap. One, two, three fingers. Put my thumb down there, slide until the top of my first finger is right where my thumbnail is. Step one, choose the gap. Step two, draw back under my chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow right on the target. Step five, small motion release. 
We're getting some really consistent values there. I'm getting within like a teacup at 20 meters. That's fine for this lesson. You guys know how hard it is to actually be talking while you're shooting. Now let's change it up and use the 30 pound bow. Thirty pound bow, hi Neri. Same arrows. What changes? Only the gap that I use for my draw. Instead of it being instead of it being three whole fingers, one, two, three. It's actually going to be half that, one and a half fingers sliding down, so that the sight picture looks like that. Let's go give that a try. By the way, this is for Emmanuel in Poland. Uh, Emmanuel, it's been really nice chatting with you back and forth. I love your comments, I love your passion. Hang in there and learn this method. This video is for you, buddy. Step one, we're gonna choose the gap, not three fingers, but one and a half. Step two, draw back under my chin. <laughs> I can't even feel this bow, 30 pounds. Uh. Step two, draw back under the chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow right on the target. Step five, small motion release. I'm talking too much. Let me shoot one more. Step one, one and a half fingers. Step two, draw back under the chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow on the target. Step five. It went a little bit to the left, but you'll see the distance was excellent there. We're within one or two inches of being exactly at 20 meters. Let's shoot two more and then we're gonna talk a bit. Step one, choose my gap, one and a half fingers. Step two, draw back under my chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow right on the target. Step five, looking pretty good. Good left, right. So I ran a little high, sometimes I move my gap. But you get the idea that the difference between a 60 pound bow and a 30 pound bow is literally cutting the initial 20 meter gap in half, but now your distance for a 10 meter interval goes up from a half a finger per 10 meters to one whole finger per 10 meters. I'm gonna pause my camera, we're gonna prove that because I'm gonna actually bring this into the 10 meter mark, which means my gap has to change by a whole 10 meters. And we're gonna see the difference between a 60 pound bow at 10 meters and a 30 pound bow at 10 meters. Okay, now we're at 10 meters, which means something has to happen. We already saw that in the Voltland shooting method, my string walking starts with measuring that 20 meter gap. And then you move from there. So if we've got 10 meters, this is the 60 pound bow. If we've got 10 meters, we start by going to the 20 meter gap right there. And then we say, what was Mark's gap for 10 meters? It was another 10 meters. I have to make the gap wider because I'm trying to bring the back of the arrow up so that it shoots shorter. How do I measure that 10 yards? I'm gonna use my thumbnail right here as a, a measuring stick and I'm gonna slide my ring finger until half of it is down below that thumbnail. So that now, if I move that nail down, that half finger, there's my 10 meters. And now I have a 10 meter gap. So let's go try that. Step one, choose your gap. There's 20 plus 10. Step two, draw back under my chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow on the target. <sighs> Step five, right smack in the center. Now let's go try that with the 30 pound bow. With the 30 pound bow, We said we we're going to have one and a half fingers as the beginning of my 20, but I need to measure, where's that view? I need to measure another full finger down to get from 20 to 10. So how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna slide my fingers down until I'm right in between two gaps. And that way I can measure very easily the width of this finger. And that gives me my extra 10 meters. Let's go over that again. I'm gonna start at one and a half fingers, my 20 meter gap. To get to 10 meters on a 30 pound bow, I need another full finger width down, a larger gap to raise the back of the arrow up so the front end points down so it shoots shorter. So 
We start at one and a half fingers and we say, I need a, I need a whole finger width. How am I gonna do that? I could measure from a half a finger to a half a finger, but that's not easy. Let's just slide our fingers down to a convenient starting place right there. Now I slide my thumb down one whole finger and there's my gap for, to for 10 meters. Let's give it a try. Step one with this bow, pick my 20 meter gap. Step two, adjust, pick my gap, which means start at the 20 meters shift one more finger to get to 10 meters. Now I've got my gap selected. Step two, draw back under my chin. Step three, look down the left edge of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow right on the target. Not above it, not below it, not left, not right. You're not shooting some gap in space. I got my target, I got that, I got that arrow directly on the center of that orange. Step five, small motion release, shot off. I swear to God, guys, you cannot talk and shoot at the same time. You've seen that in all my videos. This time I'm gonna be very quiet. I've even got an audience here, so I'm under extreme pressure right now. They're all looking and saying, tisk, tisk, he went a little left. I doubt the method. Let's pick the gap. First, we're trying to get for 20, so we go to one and a half fingers on this bow. Then we have to measure an extra one finger wider. Why? because we need to lift the back of the arrow up so that the tip goes down so we shoot shorter. I picked my gap, step one. Step two, draw back under my chin. Step three, look down the left edge of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow on the target. Step five, and now we've got a really nice shot in spite of talking. So what you saw in this video today, and again, Emmanuel, this is for you, the, di the difference The different, actually we're not done yet. We gotta go out to 30 meters. So I'm gonna pause again. Okay, now we push it out to 30 meters. We started at 20. We learned what the 20 meter gap was and the 10 meter interval gap was for a 60 pound bow and for a 30 pound bow. We got to try that out at 20 and see that it worked. We got to try it out at 10 and see that the adjustment works. Now we pushed it out the other direction. And now we're gonna test it out with a 60, 60 pound bow to start. Remember that the 20 meter gap stays the same on the bow each time. You're using the interval, that 10 meter interval, to decide whether or not you're walking up for shorter distances or whether you're walking down for truly long distances, even like this. Yes, like this. This would be my 140 meter gap. So for a 30 meter target, we're gonna start off again at 20. There's our 20 yard gap. And we ask ourselves, what do I gotta do? I gotta go shorter, a half a finger right there. That's gonna pull the back of the arrow down so the tip of the arrow goes up so you get a longer distance. It's so simple. All right, let's give it a try. Step one, choose your gap. There's 20 plus up a half a finger because it's a 60 pound bow. That's my gap, two and a half fingers for 30 meters. Step two. Step two, draw back under the chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow on the target. Step five. You're gonna put a pretty decent shot. Still talking. Let's shoot one more and then we're gonna move to the 30 pound bow. Height was pretty good. Step one, choose the gap, 20 down a half, so a shorter gap of a half to get to 30 meters. Step two, draw back under the chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow on the target. Step five. Better, I'm gonna do one more. You can see I'm getting nervous and I want that silver really bad. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, Draw back under the chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow on the target. Step five, much better. We got a little bit of silver. Now let's shift over to the 30 pound bow. For the last three arrows, what changes? That interval is what you use to change the elevation of the bow from the rear instead of from the front. Compound bows, Olympic archery bows, all have sights in the front. They adjust the elevation of the bow 
by anchoring the rear and moving the front up and down. With string walking, you're anchoring the front and you're adjusting the elevation from the rear shorter distances, longer distances, really long distances, gargantuanly long distances. So we start with our 20 meter gap, one and a half fingers. And now I know to go to 30 yards or to 30 meters rather, I have to go up a full finger. I'm gonna slide down to an easy starting point so that now I see this, this is my 30 meter gap right there. It's one half finger. So here we go. Step one, choose the gap. Step two, draw back onto the chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, with the tip of the arrow on the target. Step five, oh, pulled it a little bit. Let me try again. Step one, choose the gap. Step two, draw back onto the chin. I got to tell you guys this, you may not realize this, but actually weaker bows tend to be more for unforgiving about your release. It has to be perfect because your finger can very heavily influence pushing the string to the left or to the right, even as you're releasing. With a high tension bow, with a high draw weight bow, that string wants to pull out of your hand so you can actually, it's actually more forgiving. It just tears it out of your fingers and it doesn't let itself actually influence left or right. The, the path of the string as, you, as it comes off of your fingers. But with a lower bow like this, a lower draw weight bow, super unforgiving. All right, step one, choose your gap. Step two, draw back under the chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow right on the target. Step five. Okay, we got the distance perfect. I'm starting to wonder if my daughter's bow it actually needs a little adjustment that it wants to shoot left. We're going to do one more. We really like the distance on that one. Step one, choosing the gap, half a finger. Step two, draw back under the chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip right on the target. Step five. Not a bad shot. Middle of the, middle of the bag. It's my fingers. It's not the method. So there you get a chance to actually see. So there you guys get a chance to compare string walking, the, being, the same Voltland string walking method on a high draw weight bow like 60 pounds compared to a smaller draw weight bow like 30 pounds. On the larger bow, your 20 meter gap increases and your interval, your 10 meter interval gap decreases. It becomes a half a finger. On a smaller bow, necessarily the rear has to come up and that means that your 20 meter gap interval your 20 meter gap gets smaller and you need to have a larger inclination for every 10 meters so that means your 10 meter interval gap gets bigger three fingers to, to reach 20 one half finger per 10 meters on a 30 pound bow one and a half fingers is what your 20 meter gap is and a full finger change in elevation is what's required that's it for this particular lesson. The rest is all going to be outtakes because I want to see if I can actually shoot out to 70 meters with my daughter's bow. But we're going to add that as a little benefit and I got to get set up over there. You guys saw in previous uh, videos just in the last couple weeks that I was shooting this all the way out to 50 meters. But that's all that range had was a 50 meter target. Now I've got a smiley face over there at 70 meters. So we're going to see how far this method can take it. This is Mark Vogt with Voltland Outdoors. I hope you subscribe to my channel and find it enjoying. Emmanuel, I hope you found, Emmanuel in Poland, I hope you found this really interesting. And we'll see you out there. Okay, it's outtake times. One thing I promised you guys in a previous video was taking my daughter's 30 pound bow, 28, I draw it out to 30, and actually showing that the Voltland shooting method can go beyond the 50 meters that was available at that particular range. Today, that little Mr. Smiley is a whopping 70 meters out there. So we're gonna give that a try. What does it look like? We saw that for this particular bow, my 20 meter gap was one and a half fingers, and I need to come up with a full finger for every 10, every 10 meters. So I need to get from 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 to 70. That's gonna be one finger, two fingers, 
three fingers, three fingers above, above the, above the arrow, I think is going to give me one, two, three, 10, 20, 30. Yeah, I think that's going to be pretty close. And here's what it's going to look like, guys. I got to point this way. I'm going to be shooting like this. I'm going to be looking down the left side of my string, putting the tip of the arrow right on the target. And we're going to see what that does. So, here's the first shot. Let me just measure that one more time. There's my 20. I need 30, 45, 55, 65. Yeah, yeah, should be it. Here goes. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, draw back under your chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow right on the target. Step five. Okay, you guys aren't going to believe this. Uh, my last shot that you saw and the, the film literally stopped is because it's a little over 100 degrees here in Chicago and my phone actually heated up in the sun to the point where it cut off and said, phone's too hot, stopping. Can you believe it? Right on the release and I hit the target. We're going to repeat it now for your pleasure because I promise you guys. Remember, it's a 30 pound recurve bow using the Voltland shooting technique and string walking to actually shoot at 70 meters. Step one, we're going to choose the gap. The gap in this case is a whopping three and a half finger above the arrow. This is what it looks like. Choosing the gap. Step two, draw back under the chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow on the target. Step five. Oh, landed just a little right. Let's do it again. Step one, choose my gap. Step two, draw back under my chin. Step three, look down the left edge of the string. Step four, tip the arrow on the target. Step five. I hit him right between the eyes. So we see that the Voltland shooting method with its string walking actually is capable of taking a measly 28 pound bow and shooting and, and reaching the target effectively at 70 meters. I hope you enjoyed this little outtake. This is Mark Vo with Voltland Outdoors. We'll see you out there.